Welcome to Sexology, a podcast that untangles the science of sex and pleasure. And now, with this week's episode, your host, clinical psychologist, Dr. Nazanin Moali. Hello there, you are listening to another episode of Sexology Podcast. If you are surprised to see a second episode dropped in your feed this week, it's because I just wanted to say I love you and we just passed the milestone. Last Tuesday, we dropped our 200th episode and I thought it this would be a way for me to say thank you to all of my wonderful listeners. So this conversation, is pretty much a can be an off law conversation that uh, two sex therapists are having with each other. We were talking about how you can spice things up during Halloween because with all the stressors that's in our environment, we all can benefit from having some playtime. My friend Erica Miley, she's a mental and sexual health expert, therapist, and PhD candidate. She also hosts her own podcast, Sex Talk with Erica Miley. Without further ado, here's our conversation. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is our first. I mean, you and I have been on each other's shows. Hi, Hi. I'm, I'm Erica Miley, mental and psychological health therapist. <laughs> we should introduce ourselves. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm Naz Anin Mali. I'm a psychologist and a sex therapist. I'm very uh, excited. This is a crossover episode for Sex Talk with Erica Miley and the Sexology Podcast. Yes. Uh, I am yes. just stoked. I am so excited. Yes, yes. I'm speaking over you because I, I'm that excited. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this, y'all buckle in. Naz and I are friends outside of podcasting, so you're just going to get a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> you might not remember this, but we started kind of like doing this journey around four years ago. And I remember mm-hmm. specifically, you were talking about your first episode wanted to be, you wanted to do something Halloween and you were pitching yes. your ideas. And it, it they were fantastic. I didn't remember that it was all Halloween related, but I remember like uh shout out to Melvin Phillips because that's how uh, Naz and I met. We met yes. in uh, his podcasting community and we just started meeting and like we fell in love. I fell in yes, love. Yes, I, I fell in love. Me. Yes, <laughs> as well. And I'm so glad we are connected. Another friend and we both have tons of great ideas for you. <laughs> yes, we we were we were tossing all of these things around. Like, what do we really want to talk about? Like, top five things to spooky up your sex life. And then we thought, do you want a spooky sex life? <laughs> <laughs> When our world is so spooky right now. <laughs> I know, maybe calm is all we want, like meditative sex. Like, I mean, we should have done like a Halloween Tantra episode. Or something. Right, right. But I'm, I love the idea of Tantra, I feel like. But it, for me, sex is all about play. So mm-hmm. this is actually a better fit. I actually, I'm, I'm completely right there with you. Like personally, like for, that's like, uh, when I think about the things that the elements that turn me on the most, Mm -hmm. it is, Uh there's gotta be an element of play and there's gotta be a, we can't take this too seriously. Mm -hmm. Bodies make funny noises. Faces make funny like shapes. Like there's no way to take this too seriously. Like for me, like that gear needs to be in place. Uh, right. what, what about having a fun sex life? Like, does it for you? Oh, for me, for sure. A big part of it is humor and fun. So yeah. I, I, it's just like when my clients, some of them are actresses and actors and they kind of get really hurt where their partner don't like the play they have in bed. And I say, you know, mm. it's, just, it's just all about play and fun. So for mm. me, it's humor and novelty. Because yes. I feel just our life, especially right now in COVID, it's just been so kind of similar and boring. And I feel like every yeah. day for me, it's the same thing. I'm grateful for so many, so many things I have in my life, but I mm-hmm. definitely need to have places for creativity and novelty. And yeah. for me, sex has been that place. Totally. Like we don't, we've all been looking at the same walls. Like, when, <laughs> And even when you're getting away, like you're getting away to look at maybe different walls, but still fairly like isolated. People are trying to do their best to keep these, keep these like little trips or things. We, we went, we went on a little trip just to try to see something different. We stayed in an Airbnb and then kayak so we could just get out into the world a little bit to not 
feel so stuck. So yeah, like the any kind of novelty that you can get in your sex life, which I'm sure any listeners to either one of our shows mm-hmm. has probably heard that 150 million times. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to hear it 152 times every <laughs> time. Right. great ideas. That's right. So like it, when we, when I think of spooky, I think of, I think of something novel, something, usually something that scares us is something that we don't expect, right? Mm-hmm. Something that like maybe pops out and startles us a little bit, or, or maybe I, I was thinking in the way that this could really relate to sex is like sexy dynamics and mm-hmm. shifting how those like happen when you're with your partner. Like when say you tend to be a more dominant seeking appetite, uh-huh. she calls the like the BDSM and the different types of dynamics appetites. Uh-huh. So you can shift through them more easily rather than just holding one onto one so tightly with our identities, right? Right. So maybe you change that dynamic a little mm-hmm. bit and it comes a little, it gets a little spooky, a little scary because you're not used to maybe being more submissive than dominant. What do you think of that? Love that. And I think sometimes we are craving something new, but we don't mm. know how to bring it up. So this can be an opportunity for, for, for our listeners and their partners to give permission to themselves to mm. tap into another appetite, as you mentioned, that may be really kind of like channeling different kind of energy and kind of see like, how does it feel? Maybe it will be a good fit that you can add to your sexual repertoire, or maybe it's just a one-time thing that you're doing, but still you're trying something new. I love it. I love that. And the newness doesn't have to be a lot, Mm -hmm. right? Like we were, we were joking before we got, we got recording uh, about how you could just, you know, put on that Halloween t-shirt you bought from the store. Right. (laughs) (laughs) That you're not going to get to go trick or treat again, but you are going to get to maybe have a little bit more fun in bed. Maybe outfits is a good way to make it a little bit more spooky or different. Right. Right. So let's tell, tell us your first idea. Okay, I'm thinking like location change might be in order, right? I love that. And and I don't necessarily think like if you're trying to stay indoors versus like go outside, the, the mm-hmm. both things could happen. We mm-hmm. just have to plan in advance a little bit. So, but in your own home, having sex somewhere else that you wouldn't necessarily always have sex in. Maybe there's mm-hmm. a closet you haven't uh, broken in. <laughs> maybe there's uh, maybe at the end of the bed instead of always being in the bed. Maybe on the kitchen counter would be a good spot to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and then outside is an option. It does mm-hmm. depend on where you're living, just so that you don't commit any crimes. But <laughs> like being somewhere different, changing mm-hmm. your location can fundamentally change things up, and it doesn't have to be a giant change. Love that. And you know, like sometimes when I talk to people, I ask them, especially for my clients, what are some of the best kind of sexual experiences you had? And many people are turned on with the idea of being seen. Mm. And, uh, you know, maybe in your house, there is a window that you can like uh, have sex in front of or start for playing in front of it. Or there's a courtyard outside that there is this possibility of you being seen. Again, these are Mm. safe areas because it's within your house, but it it can add an element of excitement. I like that. You know, I always wonder how how does it feel to have sex on uh, symmetry? Is it called symmetry? How do you pronounce it? Cemetery. (laughs) Yes. Yes, absolutely. Sex in a cemetery. I, there is this like, there's this word, I think it's called spectrophilia, where mm-hmm. people have sex with ghosts. Uh-huh. So I imagine that would attempt, if somebody was going to uh, try to have sex with a ghost, mm-hmm. that that's, what they, that's where they would go. They'd go to a cemetery or they'd mm-hmm. go to like a memorial site or, or something like that. Uh-huh. Uh, folks who, who listen to this episode are going to have to tell us if they've tried to ever have sex with a ghost. Oh, I would love that. I would love to hear that. Mm-hmm. And I, I, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. I personally haven't experimented with it, but I think I think the idea of kind of a kind of unknown and fear, a fearful aspect of it, it's, mm. it's going to be interesting. So I hope it's not disrespectful to people's beliefs and ideas, but I think that can be a good, good place. Yes. Within legality, people do you like, don't, we're not going to ever encourage like going to jail over this. <laughs> well, or at least make your own decisions for that. That's right. You make your choices, make your yes. choices. But like, I, I, I think that's an interesting idea though, that I, in a, like adding an element of spirituality in mm-hmm. some way to make this 
interaction maybe a little bit more hot, a mm-hmm. little bit more spooky in quotation marks. Right. Do you have a Do you have another idea? What are you yes, thinking? Yes, yes. So the, one of my favorite things is like painting your own outfit. Uh, mm. So like using paintbrush, you can do it uh, or your partner can paint your costume. And when I was eight, I came across this movie it was about swingers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like we had poor supervision at home. And one of those <laughs> scenes. I, mean, I think during the 80s and 90s, like that was like the, right. that was the existence, right? Like, yeah, I thought those were was my mom. But the movie actually we recently watched and called Swingers. I think the movie was uh, like filmed in 60s, super interesting. And there was this scene of the couple, kind of the swinger kind of room were painting each other's body. And I think from that movie, it entered my erotic template. So I think Mm. that's incredibly sexy. You can use the paints that that are edible. So yes. you can you can kind of play with it. It's it's. I think the stroke can be sexy. So all about it. I'm really, as you can hear, I'm really mm-hmm. into this. Oh, I imagine you could find some like fun edible things mm-hmm. too, like edible. Like I know that like some of these amazing cake makers and and pastry makers out here have some amazing like edible glitter. Uh-huh. Edible, like I'm sure you can find edible paints that they use on cakes, and then you get to lick it off. Right? How fun would that be? Yes, <laughs> yes. There are definitely edible kind of paints that are chocolate taste, and there are underwears that are edible. So you can go Perfect. all out with that. Yes, and you know, make sure everybody cleans up afterwards because nobody needs a yeast infection from too much sugar. <laughs> <laughs> That's my practical your, person. <laughs> right, my, I'm thinking about that. <laughs> it's, the, it's the parent in me. I'm going to be like thinking about, what. okay, what mess are we going to need to clean up? <laughs> right, right. And like you want to make sure that you're not exposing yourself to mm-hmm. any kind of infection. But they can, yes. like if it's like using it for outside, I think it can be Absolutely. really fun. Absolutely. Totally fun. I can just picture how how creative you could get and how much little time you might like completely laugh your ass off. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can do that in the courtyard. <laughs> so you yes. can do option one and two together. And That's you're not right. about cleaning up. Ex- I, I love that idea. And then it would be like an art. It would be like an art installation. So mm-hmm. you can make that argument for nudity in public. Right. Depending on where in the world you are. <laughs> Here in America, they're not so keen on it. I know there's other places in the world that are way better with nudity than we are. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so what is uh, the third idea? So I'm, you know, I would be remiss without talking about role playing, right? Mm-hmm. Like we, this is actually the costume time of year, right? right? Like this is the time when folks, like the day after Halloween, I'm hoping you're all going into like some of these Halloween stores and buying like 50% off outfits so that then you can use them in bed. Mm-hmm. Like Great you can idea. go get your fireman outfit. You can go get your slinky, like whole body fishnet outfit, mm-hmm. right? Like this is the time of year where those discounts are out there, but also right. you can pack up for the rest of the year. Uh-huh. And being able to find like um, one of my favorite things my husband appreciates very much is my, I have this body stocking that goes all Ooh, the way up those and are in ties in a halter in the back. Mm-hmm. And I love that. But the best time of year to find things like that is now. Right, right. I love that. What a great idea. And I think uh, kind of going back to kind of ex- experimenting with your fantasies, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's a perfect time to introduce it uh, to your partner. That like, honey, uh, like, let's try to do this role play so you can see kind of like almost dress rehearsal if, to see if you like it or not. What are some of your favorite outfits? I mean, I, I do. I, I mean, you, you know, and many of my listeners are aware, uh, I'm a giant nerd. So if I can get like a, a superhero outfit involved, that would be really fun. Like nice. having my husband dress up as Thor. Like, uh-huh. yeah, I'm here for that. I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Batman drives me crazy. So I'm the Batman person. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Please, 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 partner, dress up as superhero. I would very much appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And I would like, and for me, I, I'm not often likely going to put on fishnets. My, my children and my husband love to tease me about being a fitness hobo, that I'm constantly in fitness clothing. <laughs> I'm constantly in my running shorts. I'm constantly, yeah. And so fishnets are not something I wear regularly. But during Halloween, like last year, 
before COVID time. Uh, I was Ursula, but I was from Ooh. The Little Mermaid, mm-hmm. but I was a sexy version of Ursula because why not? <laughs> and I wore these great fishnet stockings that Ooh. I loved. And I was just like, yes, yes, this is sexy Ursula. Yes. <laughs> what about you? I love that. So let's see what I like. I'm crazy about Wonder Woman, but mm, I, yes. I'm the I, I'm doing it for for me. My husband doesn't find Wonder Woman sexy. <laughs> <laughs> You're like I'm wearing this. I like. This is for me. This is for and, me. Uh, I do and like I me. go to comic cons and stuff. So I, I I I have one Wonder Woman outfit that I'm crazy about. But as far as like for like for inside and outside bedroom, <laughs> mm-hmm. my husband and I we love. Khaleesi from the Game of oh, Thrones, yes. Queen Daenerys. And I have this like very fun Queen Daenerys kind of clothing and wig and all of that. And the dragon. You have the wig. Uh, yeah, I, I have need the to wig. see this. I need to see you in this wig. This I'll send you that. I have images. I, I, I wore it for like Comic Con two years ago. It's just, I was so yeah. sad this season ended because now mm-hmm. I don't know where to wear them outside the bedroom. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, okay. Well, we're all dressing up this year. <laughs> nice. <laughs> for my Zoom call number 500. <laughs> I know. For all of my clients, that's that's what I'm going to do. I'll have to dress up for Halloween for all of my clients. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about going like super, super not sexy. Well, I mean, I guess it could be sexy if I like put fish nest in it or something. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to go as a proctologist Ooh. and like <laughs> have like doctor butt stuff or something nice. on like scrubs uh-huh. because because then you can wear a mask. So mm-hmm. any of you people who are going to small gatherings, how can you incorporate a mask? That's what I'm going to challenge mm-hmm. all of you to do. Mm-hmm. If you must go, how can you incorporate a mask mm-hmm. in that wonderful ensemble that you've put on. <laughs> well, you know, funny thing, you read my mind because we are going to, we're recording this two weeks prior to the Halloween, but mm-hmm. we are going to the small, very small gathering, six people tonight. And oh, my fantastic. husband is more particular and then Fauci. <laughs> he said, like, we're going, <laughs> if you have proper mask. And I was like, mm-hmm. you know, like, wonder, I couldn't wear my Wonder Woman outfit. <laughs> so yes. I, I wear had go- a Wonder Woman mask. That's good. Be. Maybe like a 2021 Wonder Woman, the lady who yes. comes to save us. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but I'm what we're wearing... Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. It would be great. Yes, yes. So like, but I'll, I'll I, save I, that I, for next I year. I could totally picture it. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a couple of months. But what, what I'm wearing uh, is that... Have you watched Animal Farm? Have you read the book? Yes, yes. So I'm going as a, uh, as a cra- raven. The, like oh, Moses, because you know, amazing. with the social injustice things, all things that happening, you know, that they, yes. there's a saying that all animals are equal, but some, some of them are more equal, something like that. And I felt it would be very appropriate for this year with all craziness. And he's, he's coming with me as a pig. So <laughs> we're animal this. farm. I love this so much. Oh, because I mean, the, it would be, we would be remiss if we weren't talking about like how much it's been on you and I's mind and mm-hmm. how much it's been everything that we're facing in, in the US right now and across the world, what everybody's facing with COVID. Like, it, we would be remiss to say like that it's not occupying every mm-hmm. part of our thoughts and our existence, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and you being able to get out to go to even a small gathering for Halloween just feels like such a treat. Right. Right. And how can you do it safety, safely? As you mentioned, I love that. So I have this huge beak <laughs> that serves as a mask. Yeah. And I guess I'm not drinking tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you can figure out how to siphon it through the, like, the pig's oh, mouth or something like that. <laughs> brought, brought your costume hose or something like that. Right. right. Or maybe bring your own chewable or kind of edible, something like that. Yes, I'm not, yes. yeah. I'm not depending promoting on, that. <laughs> oh, hey, depending on the state you're in, like if it's legal, where you are at, you know, maybe a little edible that night rather than drinking so you can right. keep your mask on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the next idea. So I'm thinking yes. about what I love is kind of incorporating temperature play. And I feel mm. now it's a good time for it. Like, you know, that there are kind of massage oils, candles that you can lit mm. up. And if you're thinking about incorporating a little bit of a kinkiness into yes. your play, that's a kind of an easy, easier kind of way to do it. Obviously, you want to make sure that you're using a special candle, that it's not, Mm. it gets too super hot and you always want to have a a safe board. But I feel like it's one of those time of the year that you can kind of do that. 
Yes. I think temperature play would be really fun. I love this idea, especially like as long as everybody's on board, which, you know, Naz and I are constantly consent to all of you listeners out there. But like, if everybody's on board, there's a lot of things that you can do here, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could jump in a really hot shower and then afterwards play with ice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that would be really, really fun. Like bring up the whole body temperature Mm -hmm. and play with ice, which would be like, totally add that novelty piece, mm-hmm. but also add like the, the like if we're after spooky sex, right? Mm-hmm. Like goosebumps could right. be had <laughs> with temperature play. Yes, yes. And it can increase the uh, kind of sensation and blood flow. So you can have like, depending on how tactful you are with it, it can increase your the intensity of your arousal. So I think that's one of those ideas that I like with kind of like, it's safe usually enough that people feel mm-hmm. comfortable doing it, but uh, it, it can add a little bit of spice. Yes, I love that. And there are definitely toys that can be had for this too. Like, mm. I know there are many people out there who love like glass toys and like mm-hmm. metal toys where you can easily like mm. put put some in like hot water so you can heat right. it up or you can huh. put it in a cold place like your refrigerator and mm-hmm. cool it off. There's lots of different options here. I love See, this. Idea. I got an idea. I didn't think about the incorporating temperature play in toys. You're brilliant. <laughs> See, this is why we love each other. Brilliant. <laughs> yes. People. Brilliance and brilliance together. Aww. That's what it is. <laughs> so what's what's next? I'm thinking potentially it would be fun to like incorporate some different kinds of foods, right? Like mm-hmm. it could be fun to add foods that you wouldn't necessarily add typically. Maybe you make a special drink mm-hmm. beforehand that's specific to the holiday and then you have some, maybe some fruits and vegetables added to, <laughs> to your play, like, like what, like that are specific to the season, right? Mm-hmm. Like that you could grab some carrots and celery uh-huh. and like make a whole human like witcher's brew. Like I'm just coming up with fun. Here. Like <laughs> No, I love that. Something off the wall that you can think of that might be something that you've never tried before. Mm-hmm. Like bringing in some hot apple cider into mm-hmm. the bedroom and not only just drinking with it, maybe play, bringing that temperature play in, right? Right. And, and maybe dipping your fingers in it and running your fingers along your, your partner's back. Mm-hmm. Like there could be a lot of fun to be had using different kinds of foods because then you're also with temperature and potentially different textures too. Love that. A funny thing is that a few weeks ago, I started saying, well, you know how everyone is doing cooking? Let me make this sexy recipe. Like, uh, do, you, do you know Linda De Villar? She's a psychologist. Oh, yes. 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 So Linda has this cooking book. So I was like, oh, you know, I make, especially for increasing your libido. It's like, oh, I'll start making food from this recipe book and I'm horrible cook. So, you know, I started with fancy stuff and cookie. I was like, this is not working. Let's move to the cocktail. And a couple of weeks ago, I made one of her recipes called Screaming Orgasm. Oh God, Ooh. it was so delicious and intoxicating and fun. So maybe that could be mm. something. That's a great idea. And I have seen your, your I think you're doing it on Instagram, right? Oh, uh-huh, yeah. yeah. It's just so fun. Y'all go watch it. It's a lot of fun. It's a way, That's I mean, sweet. we're all stuck inside. Like watch Naz make sexy food. Like At, with a questionable taste. <laughs> <laughs> Beside alcohol. The alcohol one was a winner. Yeah, right? We got our measurements down for our alcohol by now. We're all expert ben, uh, bartenders by the end. Right. Of it, right? <laughs> so I'd like a, a sexy drink, I think, is a really good place to start. And some people may even feel that's a little easier mm-hmm. of uh, like a recipe to follow. Right. And, you know, you don't have to get super complicated. It just has to be something a little bit novel, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where it's something that you haven't done before. Exactly. And, you know, since I'm not super skilled with the cooking, I compromise with kind of coming, like increasing the excitement with incorporating sexual tension. So Mm. people can kind of do a striptease as they're making kind of like the recipe. You can kind of like do kind of blindfolding, all sorts of fun Mm. things that you can add to that. Oh yeah, look at that, like changing up the dynamics right there. I mean, and then like the outfits we've already suggested, y'all could cook in these outfits first. (laughs) <laughs> as long as you're not trying to make like a buffet or, or like a whole lot of food, like this simple is what we're after. Simple changes, simple options so that you 
can enjoy this and enjoy mm-hmm. the novelty to spice up that sex life. As you were talking about like the different body paintings, I was thinking like this might be an option where you use food and incorporate food in. Maybe you make some fun, uh, you can blend up some fun tasting things mm-hmm. and then incorporate that into some of the body painting. Right, right. What are you thinking? Oh, I was just, I was imagining, and this is probably just because I really like strawberry jam. Mm. Um, but we could like, you could blend up some strawberries and maybe like uh, for us in our house, it'd be like almond milk or something. Just oh, a yeah. Bit of, just a little bit of that, just to give it a little bit of liquid. But you could use that on a brush easily mm-hmm. and it would taste wonderful on the mm-hmm. skin. Of course, if you're not allergic to berries, you know, don't eat shit you're allergic to. But like... <laughs> Find something new and interesting. Like, what would you? What would you want to? What would you want painted on you? A food item. Mm-hmm. Caramel. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Caramel and chocolate. Like, I, I would. Oh, I would amazing. like indulge in that all day. <laughs> yes, that would be so good. I mean, even like you could easily like get some uh, like pudding, something mm-hmm. pudding based that would be easily spreadable across the body. Like I could imagine a little caramel drizzled on top of like chocolate pudding. Mm. Oh yeah, now I'm hungry. <laughs> I know. It's, it's close to dinner time here in the East Coast. So I'm like, I'm hungry. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think I think all of these ideas that would be really, really wonderful options. When mm-hmm. like when you're thinking about what your clients are are allowing themselves to do, mm-hmm. like getting out, like what might be a one like simple safe way that they could like maybe get to a different location or maybe go to one of these parties and increase some of the sexiness of their environment? Like mm-hmm. what, what, are you, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking then maybe you can do have kind of a scavenger hunt inside oh, the house, like outside idea. the house. You can kind of add kind of clues for your partner and maybe you can put kind of like different sex toys and things that you want, that you want them to incorporate on the play that night. So it could yes. be on the kind of part of their costume in their pockets or it could be in the car. So kind of those things that you, you can kind of simulate the imagination because we mm-hmm. want to reactivate our kind of like erotic mind and then yeah. also kind of like add to this element of playfulness. So you can, whether you're inside the house or you're out going to a party, you can do that. I love that idea. Like that that would key in on that novelty in a big mm-hmm. way, like having to search through the house or maybe in your yard. And then you have this entire activity that you're one, not staring at another screen, mm-hmm. um, but like you are also then like building that anticipation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's a great idea. And then of course, I want to suggest something that's on a screen. After I say get off the screen, <laughs> Ooh, I, I want to hear that. What is that? Um, I actually heard about this from a colleague, and this is specifically, I, I from what I understand about this, I haven't gotten to try this yet, but like it's women led. So like, this is specifically for like women to kind of lead the way, but also try potentially some like sex party environments. Ooh, okay. It's called Killing Kittens and Mm. it's all online. It's all an online community and they do virtual parties. So I just think it would be like a really interesting way that you Mm -hmm. could add something different without having to like go out and worry about exposing yourself, but also like still expose yourself to other people at home. <laughs> That's fun. So talk to me. It's like, is the, this, when you say women led, it's like women organizing it or, it, but it's co-ed, right? Both. It's both. So like, it's a company that is ran by women. And I'm just going to kind of read a little bit off of the website. It says, dare to be a kitten. The rules have changed. We're sexually liberating women, men, and couples every day. Sign up and become part of the empowering online community. A platform where women come first. We believe in challenging the status quo. We're changing the way that people think about sex and dating. We invite you to discover a world where women come first, where sexy is not a shape. It's a mindset. And so it's all about like building these like romantic mm. kind of sexual type 
parties that are mm-hmm. virtual. And then also having an online community of other kind of like-minded women that mm-hmm. allow you to like really discover like, oh, am I interested in maybe some of that voyeurism like right. we're talking about? Or mm-hmm. like being able to like maybe perform a little bit in front of another person. Right. But maybe at a distance. So, mm-hmm. but again, this is woman. So I, from what I understand about it, you do have to like, to join the community, mm-hmm. you have to be a woman, mm-hmm. but you have to, like, if it's a couple, mm-hmm. the, the woman has to be the initiator. Okay. I so like that. it's it's really just kind of that extra, extra layer of, I think, just trying to create some, maybe some safety or let women maybe feel a little bit safer about trying something like this. Love that. What a great idea. And I, I like that it's kind of actually in the, on the screen, feels uh, slightly more comfortable for, I can imagine, many of my clients kind of thinking about where it's kind of going in person. It's a kind of very safe way of exploring this. And I like that, like women kind of, our view at times are different when it comes to uh, kind of sexual play. And sometimes we are more considered about all kind of playing and being mindful of all aspects of Mm -hmm. what makes the environment sexy and fun and safe. Yeah. So, and I, I know I sound like a, a grandmother <laughs> talking about I know, safety. I'm... Was like, but I, I, I can imagine that that's what makes people excited. Like, kind of, there is yes. an element of safety as well. Yeah, it it kind of it can feel like dipping your toe and with a little bit of a safety net, and also getting to talk to a community that has maybe done something like that before mm-hmm. would also give you a little bit of that sense of like, oh, I know what's coming, or mm-hmm. I can I can at least expect for a, a party like this to go this way. Mm-hmm. And if I'm uncomfortable or if I'm scared or get too scared, then I can leave mm-hmm. if I want to, and I can just close my computer or whatever the case <laughs> may be. Right. So I. Just just think it's a really cool idea. Um, so we'll put that we'll put that uh, resource in the show notes so that y'all can find it. And if I'm sure if Naz or I find any of the people who have created it, they'll probably end up on one of our shows. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. And I, I didn't know about that. So that's great, great tip. And yes, definitely going to be on the show notes, <laughs> our yes. show notes. You know, one other thing I'm thinking is the kind of like sexy horror stories. So uh, mm. whether you can like watch it with your partner, telling your partner the ones that you like about it, or you can read about them. You know, in, in during COVID, we all have been at least like me and most of my friends been watching more TV than kind of like a series um, more than before. And, Absolutely. and, you know, it's interesting that I find myself, oh, at times this is hot and sexy and it feels wrong and scary. So mm-hmm. maybe kind of talking about that with your partner, showing those things to your partner can kind of a, open up the door to having this sexual conversation, but also mm-hmm. it can kind of like add that novelty and create this curiosity. I, I think you're, you're on to something here, right? Like that little bit of fear mm-hmm. and a little bit of pleasure. Mm-hmm. Those are actually not all that far from one another in the brain. Mm-hmm. So like, I think that 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 could be a really, really fun way to kind of experiment Mm -hmm. with like, again, in that kind of little small baby step way with, ooh, that's kind of scary Mm -hmm. and it turns me on. Right. No, and I think also it you discover like you increase your awareness of what is in your erotic template. Like, oh, maybe this is something going on here that it turns me on, and I can incorporate it in our sexual play. So I like that aspect of it as well. Yeah, absolutely. It also might be cool to like go back in time a little bit, right? Like, I think that would be an interesting thing for people to do during the season. Is like. What was sexy to you when you were younger, right? Mm-hmm. Like your, the erotic template, like you talk about, mm-hmm. like is so incredible. It's a, such an incredible wealth of information for us as mm-hmm. humans to mine, to understand about ourselves. But then being able to talk about it with your partner, like was that like old school Jamie Lee Curtis horror movie and seeing her run around in a lot less clothing and no bra, super erotic to you? Cool. Share that with your partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And it kind of like to the going back to the body painting thing, when mm-hmm. I told my husband, I was like, you know, I don't know, like, where is that coming from? But I showed him the movie. And after mm-hmm. he saw the context, I was like, oh, now I get it. So yes. it's kind of like create this connection, can create a connection if your partner can see why something is erotic to you. So yes, and I love that kind of like focusing and going back to the time and kind of revisiting that younger part of you it can help mm-hmm. you to 
feel connected with that uh, youth and excitement. We've been catching up, you know, as all of us are watching shows, right? We really enjoyed uh, the new version of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, I haven't watched that one. Oh, everybody, y'all go watch it. It's great. It's super creepy. So the original Sabrina the Teenage Witch was all about like, it was goofy. It was campy. It was funny. Hmm. This is like, like almost like a comic book. Mm -hmm. So this is much, much darker. Mm -hmm. This is much more about like spells and Mm -hmm. and a little bit on the kind of horror side. Mm -hmm. But there's also like, there's this entire environment where witches and warlocks Mm -hmm. love the sensual and Mm -hmm. love sex. So it is kind of this great series that kind of has this, this balance of like fun, scary kind of horror and then also sexy. Mm-hmm. Love that, love that. And you know, what? I, what I, how I discovered this horror sexual fantasy kind of realm is like I was trying to uh, kind of watch some of those, the, you know, the movies on the best list of kind of like hot and erotic and kind of mm-hmm. art, art cinema. And oh, then I was yeah. like, oh, these are very artsy and interesting, but just so dark <laughs> and arousing and so interesting and you can have so many different emotions. Oh, when you are watching something. Okay, so it was interesting for me to experience that. I love that. I think that anytime we can kind of tap into more complicated feeling emotions, mm-hmm. that that is novel in itself. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's scary. And that's turning me on. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it might be a different feeling for some people. They may right. have never identified that they could feel both of those things at the same time. Absolutely. And you know, one other thing I was thinking, there's tons of fun Halloween theme sex toys. Oh, uh, yeah. That they're like fun butt plugs that like, there's a fairy kind of like on the back of it. There is like oh, yeah. just fun tentacles that they're dildos. And if you have been yes. shy about introducing sex toys in your bedroom, maybe now it's a way to use it as a prop and kind of open up that conversation. What do you think about that? I love that idea. You made me think of like the last time I, I saw a really neat pl- butt plug not, not all that long ago where there was a wonderful tail mm-hmm. attached to the back of it. Right, right. That's so what I'm was, talking about. Yeah. yeah. And there is a, some of them, they have this beautiful fair. Yes. To it. So you can be a real bunny. <laughs> yes, you can be a real bunny. You could be, I've seen, I've seen lots of different, I've seen ones with jewels mm-hmm. that are beautiful. Right. And I know I've seen sex toys that are fun, super fun shaped. There are definitely sex toys out there that have like vegetable shapes. So I'm sure you could find a pumpkin. Uh-huh. I'm sure that exists <laughs> somewhere. Someone's made it. <laughs> you can definitely find things that are oddly shaped and oddly shaped in a good way that mm-hmm. might create some sort of stimulation that maybe you've never thought of before. Right. So I definitely seen like Frank Stein, Dildos, Dork Dolls are kind of more amazing. traditional <laughs> ones. So you can revisit some of your childhood's fantasies. Not like a fantasized Frank Stein. But <laughs> I mean, but how many people have fantasized about vampires though? Mm-hmm. Like, now I, we're talking. like, I mean, seriously, <laughs> like so many people. And, and probably over time, this has been like something people have fantasized about again and again and again mm. since... The, some of like the Dracula series were, were written because there was always this element, especially with Dracula, mm-hmm. that was erotic. Right. That it was like there was an element, um, I don't know if you ever saw, oh, and of course the movie title is like going to leave me, the, the, the vampire movie that had um, Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt in it. No, I'm watching oh, that tonight. Oh, you, yes, <laughs> you're my, watching it tonight. In my Raven uh, costume. I'm going to find it. Uh, <laughs> come on, the Google. This is going to help us out. And Tom Cruise. Together, it was, I think, Interview with the Vampire. Ooh, okay. So that's definitely yes, the classic the one. I haven't watched it. Oh, nice. Oh, that one's a, that one. I'm I'm probably gonna have to watch that again. It has been a very long time since I've seen that movie. But there's still like this erotic mm-hmm. sense to the idea of the vampire, and then they revisited that all over again with the Twilight series, mm-hmm. right? Like that was everywhere, mm-hmm. everywhere where they were. What was it? People were like Team Edward or Team. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. What was, was the war, uh, the wolf guy? What was his yeah, name? I forgot. I can't remember. See, you know. These yeah, I don't things. remember. But I was really into them. And, you know, I'm I, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit because we're friends. I'm, I'm saying this to, to you <laughs> and thousands of people <laughs> that 
Stephen told you people you were going to hear yes. a lot from us today. My <laughs> husband was shocked. Why am I watching these like Twilights, which are like known for being for teenagers? Yeah, it was just so hot. The idea of kind of like mm. someone that cold blooded and distance, but desiring you. I was really into that. <laughs> yes, like, and it will. It was. It's again that same kind of dynamic that was very popular, very much popularized mm-hmm. way earlier than Twilight. Mm-hmm. But that kind of those sexy dynamics of mm-hmm. being chased, right. the s- switching back and forth between submission and domination. Mm-hmm. And that when we're playing with those dynamics, humans like are really quick to bring attention to that. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, like I bring up, I feel like I bring up Dr. Justin Lee Miller's work about fantasies almost every podcast, I feel like. But like he talks about how we're all we're all fantasizing in some way about BDSM. Mm-hmm. And I think it has a lot to, a lot to do with uh, these dynamics that we've been playing with for millennia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. We're just putting words on them. You know what's interesting? Justin talks about your political party affiliation and your fantasies. Mm. And so I guess if you are thinking about swinging, then Mm. you're more Republican uh, kind of like (laughs) leaned in. And if you're into BDSM, you're more Democratic Party kind of like uh, uh, leaning in towards. But I, 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 and I I don't, I'm not a Republican (laughs) (laughs) because I talked about the swinging thing. I feel like I was talking about swinger movie all the time but I love like, that you're like but I still I still we still love the dynamics mm-hmm. and I well and I think it's kind of funny like to what you've uh what you brought up with like the like whether or not you're Republican or Democrat mm-hmm. like porn is also the same thing where uh-huh. they can kind of look per state mm-hmm. and they can look and see we can see based on data because guess what everybody porn sites are keeping your data don't lie to yourself even clearing your history doesn't matter like they keep your data <laughs> and so like we have all of these states that are watching these very mm-hmm. specific kinds of porn in general. And it's really funny to see kind of some of these more conservative leaning states with very specific interests and right. more liberal leading states mm-hmm. to have specific interests. I just think that's, you know, anthropological review of <laughs> porn and sexy dynamic interests, I guess. I love that. And I think that we all need to indulge in that kind of forbidden part of our uh, yes. kind of erotic imagination. Mm. And again, Halloween can be a wonderful time to do that. It's kind of like being curious about what's there. You can be curious alone or with your partner. And maybe they they incorporating this uh, sex toy and you feel, oh God, I didn't think it's hot, but now I'm into it too. So it's mm. all about uh, kind of discovering, possibility of discovering new things. Yeah, the idea of the taboo. It mm-hmm. really is. We we eroticize that so fast mm-hmm. as humans. If it's forbidden and now oh, I kind of like it and then it kind of makes it extra hot. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean, and I, and I think maybe some people may argue with me on this, but it just because something becomes not so taboo to you doesn't mean it may become less sexy to you. Mm-hmm. One doesn't necessarily follow the other. So like, it's okay to explore some of these things and, and learn how to have conversation with your partner about things that you're interested in trying. And what better time to do that than Halloween? Mm-hmm. Well, and I love that you brought up consent because I yeah. feel like whenever we want to introduce something new, it's important in some capacity, talk to your partner about it. Because I know many of my clients are really into kind of like this kind of leaning into their adventurous side. But Mm. if that's not something that you're expecting in the moment, that can feel very scary. You know, like uh, some of my couples that they come in because their dynamic has been kind of like shifted because one of the partner tried something like, like for example, Mm. choking Mm -hmm. and the other person didn't know what was going on. And that can be traumatizing. So we all are for new stuff. It's just a matter of somehow checking in with your partner during with having a, like either a safe word or kind of checking in with them during the action and also before. 
I, and I think that goes directly into some of the things we already suggested, right? Like bringing in stuff that you found interesting when you were younger and showing it to your partner. Like then you can start asking those questions about like, hey, would you be interested in trying something like this? Hmm. The conversation about consent does not have to be something formal and scary and mood killing. It can really be like, oh, here's this interesting movie that I watched, Swingers. Hmm. And I think this is really interesting. Not that Naz wants to swing tomorrow, but like <laughs> you take this idea, this movie that, that you found to be interesting and then you go to your partner and go, hey, I find this interesting. What do you think of this? Can we actually have a conversation about this? Right, right. Absolutely. And you know what's interesting? I feel like all of these themes that we're talking about, there is an element of it, I feel it like in our collective unconscious because mm. I have clients for like lots of Middle Eastern com- countries because I'm Iranian and I see a very common themes in what mm. we are Autocizing. So I, I also mm. find that interesting. So I'm hearing that sex and our concerns around sex are similar across the world. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here in the U.S., for sure, it's definitely uh, unique in its basis in the Puritan culture. But the wonderful, other wonderful thing about the U.S. is the cultural diversity that we do have access to in some areas. Of course, not every area in the United States is diverse, but like getting to hear from different cultures and hear that, oh, yeah, we're all kind of interested in similar things, but, oh, I'm doing it a little differently over here here's a cool way that you could bring it into your life or vice versa. Right. And kind of knowing that if you're nervous and kind of like it's it's like these are the kind of things that you feel uncomfortable, these are common across the globe and everyone is just, we all have like so many common worries. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's kind of, I find it at times that can be normalizing and that can be comforting. Any kind of last, kind of like last ideas that you have? I do think, I I think that it would be good for us both to talk a tiny bit about like the barrier to sex because Mm -hmm. of just because that sheer amount of stress everybody's under. The thing Mm -hmm. I'm hearing from people is that they're having a hard time being motivated Mm -hmm. to have any kind of sexual pleasure because they're often feeling so stressed. I'm hearing about grief. I'm hearing about just worry about their children going back to school, all of these different types of things that are not necessarily arousing, right? Like Mm. these are not, stress is not arouse, uh, like it is not the most arousing experience that we have. Mm. Right. So I would encourage all of you to pull out some of that meditation practice that maybe you haven't tried yet or that you've put off. It's time. Mm -hmm. It's time to reduce your stress. And then also coming, like circling completely back to the first part of what we talked about, but adding play to your life Mm -hmm. and adding play specifically to your sex life. Mm -hmm. It really can help you slow down and be in the moment. And that kind of mindfulness to Mm -hmm. can really, really spice up your Mm -hmm. sex life for Halloween. (laughs) <laughs> Love that. And you know what What I have been hearing from my clients that they found it useful is the idea of creating some kind of ritual mm. before sex. Because as we were talking about that all of our life right now is in front of computer and we're like doing our work in front of computer and then somehow magically we're thinking we're going to close the laptop and then now we're on. Mm. And as, sometimes nope. we need some <laughs> kind of a ritual to help us get out of that work mindset and kind of gets more into kind of play play zone because it used to be when we were going to the office some for some of my clients to drive back home was the kind of way for them to have this transition and ritual Mm -hmm. but right now we don't have that so some of my clients what they do is they do some kind of a breathing exercise at time with their partner sometimes Mm -hmm. they have some kind of rituals around like setting candles around their bedroom kind of doing some tantric breathing exercises Mm -hmm. you can kind of incorporate massages because most of us these days are touch deprived. So Mm -hmm. it would be helpful to kind of add another dose of touch in the sexual play. I love that idea. They're just just the, the fact that you said that, like, I think you've brought up something that is so important, I think, for all of us that might be like the key to having the spicy Halloween, right? <laughs> like, is that we're all needing more touch that we're, mm-hmm. and we're not getting the touch, even the small amount of touch that we have throughout our day or even small interactions that we used to have throughout our day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can think about like, 
just right now in my head, I think about an average day in my life where mm-hmm. I might have had a few clients and then maybe I would have gone to a coffee shop or I would have gone out to pick up some of the groceries that I missed or or rather than being very planning every single outing, I was mm-hmm. much more able to like just have those little interactions with others a lot more frequently. And so like that absence of touch that you brought up, I think is going to be like key for people Mm -hmm. reducing that stress. Right. And I think the other thing that comes to my mind, Erica, is that kind of the importance of, and I know you talk about it as as well a lot, that kind of not focusing on orgasm. Because Mm -hmm. what happened that I hear from many of my clients because of the stress, it's really difficult for them to experience orgasm. So now this kind of are not motivating for them to have sex, but sometimes sex could be anything. Could be like touching, doing all sorts of outer play with your partner. And if you're not uh, climaxing, that's not end of the world. You're you're just still uh, having that shared experience with your partner. I love it. I love, I love it so much. I, I just appreciate that I've gotten to be here with you today. Oh, me too. It just warmed my heart that we got a chance to do that. I know we don't get to talk as often as we used to, but because, Mm -hmm. you know, our practices are busier. Big surprise, COVID, uh, big surprise. But I have a wonderful appreciation for you and I appreciate your audience for letting Mm -hmm. us just um, crush on each other the entire time. (laughs) But so thank you. Thank you for doing this with me. Thank you so much for bringing your fun, knowledgeable yourself uh, to, to this conversation. And I love you. And let's do that more in future. I hope you found our conversation useful and it brought some smile to my face. I find myself being extra vulnerable whenever I'm having these conversations with a friend and I feel a little bit exposed that I talked about lots of personal things in this podcast, but I know me and you have many months or at least weeks of relationship at this point. So I I trust you with this information. Also, I curated this list of 101 ways that you can spice up your relationship. It's completely free. It's my gift to you. If you haven't get a chance to download it yet, you can find the list in the show notes. I'll talk to you guys in a few days. Thanks for listening to Sexology Podcast. For more great content, visit www.sexologypodcast.com. Please be advised that information presented on this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health provider.